Nick and George. Oh, Rodney ain't spoken yet? No, he gonna introduce. Oh, he gonna introduce I guess. The elder. Uh, the elder. I just wanted to introduce my father, Mr. Philip and George. You know, uh, the guy I look up to. All right. You know, always happens when I was a young one. Um, and then with that, I'll just let my, my pops expound. You know, give you a little bit about him. So we just kind of in a circle, all just kind of expounding, just speaking life, right, right, building, right. constructing people. All right. Well, you know, it's nice to meet you guys. And Roger told me about it and I said, hey, I'll come. You know, my story, is, I always told him my story. I came to America from Africa, right? I came here with just a high school education. 300 bucks in my pocket. That was it, right? It was tough times. In the early 80s, Ronald Reagan was president. Recession, no jobs. Burger King, no jobs. Nowhere. You couldn't find a job, right? But there's one key thing that's very important. And... You guys don't know this, but the secret is when Africans come here, the first thing we jump on is education, right? Because hmm. we don't have that opportunity back then. Education is the first thing. If you met any African That's who right. is living here in the States, the first thing they start doing is going to school. <coughs> they might be taking one course per semester or whatever it is, they will go to school. Because that is basically the ticket to success in America, okay? Because America is a system based on a merit system, right? Except for the, the very high class, right? But it's based on, it's not who you know or who your family is, and they don't really care much about that. They care about what's in your mind. What can you offer the cooperation? What can you provide for the man? Can you solve the man's problems? You know what I mean? So the manager has a problem, right? He's looking for someone to help him solve the problem. Mm -hmm. That what he wants. So education, education, education. And fortunately, I think Obama now has made it easy, even with a felony conviction, you can still get student loans and grants and stuff to go to school. That's right. See, he got this. In fact, he didn't even know he could do that. Okay? But I read about it in, in the Wall Street Journal and stuff, and I told him about it. There a lot of brothers don't know this. Okay? They don't know that that they can still get grants and loans and all that stuff to go to school. I think that is a key. Because now it's about redemption. But it's not redemption in, in just sweet words and, and lyrics and in a poem and all that stuff, right? That doesn't work in America, right? America is about pragmatism. Because, like I said, an employer, a hiring manager wants to know, what can you do for me? Mm -hmm. Can you solve this problem that I have, right? If you can solve it, then he's going to give you an opportunity. Now, the challenge is, for you, for most of you folks, is with, with, with the background, now it becomes even more challenging to get into good jobs, right? It becomes astronomically challenging. How can you overcome that? The way to overcome that, I keep telling my son, is to change the conversation. Mm. And the way you change the conversation from, hey, you know, you been there, you did that, this and that, is to go and get some education. So once you go and you get an education, whether it be two-year college or whatever it is that you're passionate about, right? Now you change the conversation. Now you can sit before this guy and say, look, yeah, I did some bad shit. Be honest. <laughs> I did some bad shit in the past, but look at me now. Look what I've done since then. This is what I have to offer you. See, that way you're changing the conversation. you controlling the conversation now instead of him controlling the conversation. Because he, he wants to talk about it. Your, the old stuff. Now you want to talk about the new you, the new skills you got, the new education you got, and all that kind of stuff. I think that's a key now to moving forward. Period. Especially here in Minnesota, because in Minnesota, the value education, the value education, the value skills. If you can change the conversation, because in Minnesota, people are gonna say, "All right, so what have you done since you, you know, you you were there? What have you done?" And the answer they're looking for is, hey, I've gone to college, or I've gone to this school, and this and that, here's my diploma, here's my degree. That is the answer they're looking for. Serious. That's it. That's it. Because once you can do that, then, all right, fine, they're going to give you a little opportunity, right? And then you work that job, you do a good job, the next time, then now you have a job reference. You just keep moving on, and, and that's it. Because I know it's going to be tough. Really tough, because they're gonna, you know, they're gonna pull your record. They're gonna say, oh, you know. Right. But how can you change the conversation? That is the question I have for you guys. How would you change that conversation? Mm -hmm. 
I tell them that all the time. You have to not control the conversation. How can you do it? So now you have a problem you got to solve. The problem is they're going to check your record and they'll say, oop, you got the record. But then the guy looks at your resume and says, shit. This dude, all right, fine. He, you know, he's got his record. But shit, look what he's done since. You know what I mean? A reasonable person would say, I, I got to talk to this guy again. Serious. Because a lot of times, hiring managers put the, put the neck on the line for a lot of decisions, right? They do. When they hire someone, you know, they, they're putting their neck on the line. So, you know, they don't know how you're going to turn out, right? But the only way they can be sure that this guy has changed, that he's reformed himself, serious, is edu through education. Yeah, I don't know any other way. I like that you spoke on that because when I first came home in 2007, like you say, people stick their neck out for you. It took me three months to find a job when I came home. And one day I was I was at the point of just like, you know what, fuck it, back to the streets I go. And when I said that, I got a phone call. I swear to God, I got a phone call from this guy. And he's like, am I talking to Mr. Sims? And I'm like, yes. He's like, well, I got your, um, your, um, your resume offline. And he was like, I want you to come out here and talk to me. So I was like, okay, cool. Get out to talk to him. And the company that I was working for is U.S. Tires and Exhaust. It's actually a Wisconsin family-based company. And dude stuck his neck out for him. He, it wasn't him doing the interviews. I was just submitting my application to him, my former application. The applications go to the family. Right. And the family chooses. So I have to come home. I have to tell them that, you know, I was in jail for second-degree murder. I had to go there. There was not that, let's talk about it upon interview, like they told us when we first came home. Let's mm -hmm. talk about it upon interview. Most people's not looking for that. They're looking for honesty, because if they can trust you to be honest about something in your past, what else can they trust you with? So, he, um, I had to tell him, you know, I was part of a, a murder. You know, and mm -hmm. I, I was part of a murder, and I did not, I wasn't the one that pulled the trigger, but I'm as, I'm as guilty as him. Like I said, it took mm -hmm. me 10 years in my prison time to say that because we're not living because just because I say I didn't do it mm -hmm. doesn't mean society thinks that society wanted to put me there so if you continue with your own thinking of saying I didn't I didn't do it I didn't do it you're in denial with mm -hmm. yourself it took me 10 years to realize mm -hmm. I'm just as guilty as the person that did it. that's right and let me add to that you know what you were saying about the education piece and I mean you know at the end of the day it's our character you know, which takes us to the next place in yeah. education in, in a formal setting as well as in an in a, in a, in a internal setting to be able to become aware of who you are as an individual mm -hmm. to develop the education of self. And one of the things I had to realize, I just graduated from college a few months ago with my four-year degree. Congratulations. And Congratulations. I'm currently now, I just applied at the university I just graduated from, Bethel University. And I came, I mean, application is great. You know, I got three years of work history at the same spot doing this work. I'm at, for um, a, a position as a director of the missions of people coming in from underrepresented communities. And, uh, and so looking at it, I got to the place where it says, well, you know, list your criminal history. Now, I went to prison for shooting a police officer during a robbery. And I, too, myself was shot by the police officer during the robbery. And so, you know. It's one thing to say, hey, I murdered somebody. It's one thing to say, hey, I sold some dope and broke into a house. But, right. you know, here it is. I'm saying, hey, I shot the person who you hired to protect the environment. In all modesty. I'm not proud of it by no means. But then it had this box where I could, you know, in this kind of application, you can't. There is no spot where you can write and say, hey, you know, we'll talk about it on the interview. So I had to write. You know, a little, a little brief, little dissertation right. on, on my situation, and then I had to answer some essay questions. And and even right now, I believe that one because of the internal knowledge that I've acquired about myself, and two, the external knowledge that I acquired through through academia that I positioned myself. And I've been getting calls all week. I haven't got the interview yet, but I believe that the job is mine. I know that the job is mine at the university. And uh, but they've been saying, you know, hey, we've been talking. Now the people from the university are calling me, asking me how to do their job. The guy who just came out of the penitentiary from doing 12 years, they're calling me saying, hey, Mr. Gibbons, we got some questions. We want to know. We got this going on. We're trying to get this population and whatever. And they were the ones that were hired, that were picked to do the job. And they're saying, we're praying and believing that you can come on and do this. And so I, I say it all the time, man. Education is the best stimulus package. And let's simplify it. Education comes from the Greek word edukare, which means to draw out. 
all education does, whether it's through some informal settings of you reading a book or you going to school or sitting in a class or reading the Bible or the Quran or whatever, all education does is draw out what's already inside of you. The Bible says in Proverbs 20 verse 5, it says, understanding is deep within the heart. Of, wisdom is deep within the heart of a man, but it takes a man of understanding to draw it out. And education, whether it's through my brother Pharaoh, Diamante, Mr. George, Brother Kabir, O'Shea, Vez, or Terry, whoever, if all of us become the bucket on a string and say, hey, brother, let me go down inside of you and show you that you got it and you can taste and see that it's good, no different than when we tasted some sex, we tasted some alcohol, we tasted some drugs, we tasted busting pistols, we tasted gang banging, we tasted pimping, we tasted all of this and was like, hey, man, this... We thought it was good, and now being able to see, man, that this thing is for real, for real good, man. And so I, I'm, I'm appreciative. The battery's going dead, but we're going to.